types of differences. We have اختلاف اجتماعي and اختلاف ديني. We have social differences and we have religious differences. Social differences we know. He is engineer, he is this fact. Religious differences is what is causing fitna. What is causing a lot of problems. It is making us retrogress rather than progressing. Now the cause of it, I refer you to Quran. Bakara 213. Take note of these verses, brothers and sisters. 213. Allah in this particular verse explained two types of differences. The social and the religious. كان الناس أمة واحدة فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين ومنذرين وأنزل معهم الكتاب ليحكم بين الناس في مختلفه That's the word. Allah says people were one nation. Then they became different. Different means what? Black, white, yellow, pink, Asian, American, African, European. No problem. Allah said we send the prophets to come and make sure that these differences doesn't make them lose, but rather develop. The second one Allah mentioned, they continue to differ. After that, the prophet came to them with the message and the teachings. We differ. And Quran said the reason for that is zulm. Bagian bainakum. Zulm. Setam guards. Zulm. Why do I differ with you? Because of the zulm I do towards you and zulm you do towards me. How? We sit in a boardroom, we discuss. I feel I am right and you feel you are right. But Islam says there is no right, there is no wrong. Just talk. But because I feel you are too little towards me or your mind is too weak, I decide to distance myself from you. That's where the differences come from. Therefore, Quran said all these negativities that you see and the negative vibes that we see, it is a buggy and bainagum. It's because of the zulum. In fact, Islam says, for me not to talk to you is zulum against you and zulum against myself. This is what is causing all these problems and causing all this fitna. And Islam says, any division of friction which is not been handled according to the teachings of Allah cause three things. Number one, it divides the ummah apart completely. Wow. Ah. Today you go to certain communities. The daughter is making taklid of one marja. Son is making one marja. And it's simple thing, it's normal. But sometimes you find people fighting because of that. You go to Shia, to Shia. This marja has an A concept. And I don't support it. You find people are fighting. Have you seen where she asked the Kesim Maraji? It's happening today. Some like the concept of Wilayat Faki, for instance. People who are not in favor of it, they attack those who are doing it, and vice versa. It continues to divide the Ummah. When are you going to prepare for the reappearance of Imam Zaman if you don't stop these divisions? These are little things. But it is doing harm to Shi'i community. Big time. Big time. Allah. Today people have TV stations. They mention one Fulan Marja case. When are we going to overcome that? So the first danger of it is what? It widens and deepens the division. And so long as we are not together, Allah will not be with us. He will go and pick a new one. Give an example. A Christian family. I recited the Amasa a few nights ago. 
they joined Aba Abdullah. Less than a week, they became Muslims. And they were the first family Matthias alongside Abba Abdullah. If we have it, and we don't look after it, Allah will substitute us with others. <laughs> Quran made it very clear. <coughs> Surah Al-Anfal, verse 46. وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَزْحَبَ إِهُمْ O Ummat al-Islamiyya, Muslim or Ummah, and here I'm saying, O Shi'ani Ali, Shi'ani Hussain, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا Don't argue, huh? If I argue, I'll do it in a nice way. Because if you argue to show animosity, Tafshalu, you will fail this man. You will fail. Today, this was happening, unfortunately. Number two danger of such a negative division. I follow this one, I don't follow that one. We follow this one, we don't follow. Your power and strength will go astray. You are an engineer, you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, you are a soccer player, a huh? football player. Instead of coming together, now we try to understand which merger, which other merger, which no, no. power is going in vain. And the last danger of having such a division, according to the teachings of Islam, is that one person will end up ruling everyone. Let's respect our marriage. Let's honor them. Let's cherish them. I and you have not studied high hijtihad level. So I and you are not in that position to know this one is better than the other. Make your little bit of research. Follow the one you follow and submit yourself to it. Done. Last examination. How do we handle the vision? Techniques from our advice. The vision could be your family doesn't talk to that family. The vision could be we all come to the most, but he might not want him to sit next to me. <laughs> Division could be no, 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 no. I want my children to be successful, but these children, no, let them suffer. Mm. <laughs> it begins there. How do we handle it? Number one, go back to what we mentioned last night. You must know that each and every person has a right over the other. Will not but I take you to verse of Quran, Surah Al Hujurat, 11 and 12. Ishtanibu kathiram min al ban, inna ba'd al ban Stay away from doubting each other. Imam Amin said, "Give 70 excuses. Nobody will be able to give them." He's trying to say, "Don't doubt." Allah says, some of the doubt you have is a sin. Then he said, Wala tajassaswa. <laughs> Don't try to follow the person to know his fault. Wala and don't make a giba of one another. So number one, to handle it, we need to know that a mu'min or a Muslim has right over the other. That's number one. We don't want to go there. The second technique is that is to have the know-how of a handling division or debate or argument. And the know-how are three. Number one, okay, you said your marriage is marriage. Okay, do you have knowledge about marriage? Are you here to debate me now? Before you debate something, make sure you have knowledge about it. Don't debate without having knowledge about it. 
Don't say Fulan said, that one said, that Shrek said, and you do not have knowledge to debate. You ask him, I say, no, my common sense. Yes, your common sense is good, no problem. But first, you need to have knowledge about the matter. That's number one. Number two, in terms of the knowledge, you need to have a You have to be principled when you debate a person. Principle in the sense that don't wait somebody speak like one hour and you take five minutes of what he said and you spread rumors against the person. Is what is called some fitna in Muslim Ummah today. Oh, yes, say, come to Shaykh Nora, Habibi, he mentioned something. Then I take it, I continue. It causes fitna. You have to be mawdu'i, you have to be principled. Get all the information before you start talking about it. If you don't have the information, then you have to give quiet. Because you have to make give a man that where it is due. And the last one, brothers and sisters, is siyanatul mushtama. Is to be overprotective. I use the word over of your community. Because when I differ with you and we curse each other, you don't suffer. I don't suffer. The community suffer. Uh -huh. I go my way, I pray in the house. <laughs> do I go my way, I do in the house. And the community suffer. So how do you protect the community? Two things. Number one, understand that there will always be differences. Mm. It's inevitable. There will always be differences. Baba, your tongue and your teeth also they differ. When you have like nice lamb chop, but when there is a bone there which is giving you some stress up there, oh you put sometimes the tongue and the teeth they collide, isn't it? And you see a bit of blood on your tongue. But the next day when you put the food, the tongue will accept and the teeth will start biting. <coughs> There must be differences. It has to happen. If you don't want to see differences, then you don't want to dwell. And number two, we should do away with the notion of bringing someone down. Sukutul akhari. You want to bring me down? Yeah. Should I bring somebody now? When I meet you, my dear, I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I'm praying for you. Is it from my heart? Is dua I'm making? And when I say this salam, look at Quran. Salam is an attribute of Allah, isn't it? But it's a sort of creation. That is why Laylatul Qadr, we are told salam on here. Hatta that salam is enough blessing for all those who go to the mosque for Laylatul Qadr. Uh -huh. The same salam on the day of Qiyamah when all of us are in Jannah with Fatima al Zahra. Oh. Oh. from Allah. Of course, Allah doesn't talk like the way I talk. Allah doesn't have tongue like they have tongue. Allah is not material. It's not a matter that has weight and occupies a space. Huh? But Allah will send a message. What will be the message? Salamun qawlan min rabbir rahim. That salam is enough. Better than whatever you're going to get in Jannah.